Hey, good morning. Hope everybody's having a great day so far. God, it's such a wonderful day. It hasn't even started yet. Just barely. I can't even imagine the rest of the 23 hours of it. <laughs> oh, man. No, nah, daylight's about 10 hours a day right now. Um, today's topic is trees. 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 I like trees. Trees are great. They give us a lot of good things. But what... What are trees? Trees in the Bible or in any scripture, it's just scripture. It's philosophy. All scripture is philosophy. If you So, God, I don't, I don't know. This video might just come out like crap, so I don't put it out. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, screw you, Satan. You ain't <laughs> shit. <clears throat> so, trees. Yeah, there we go. Trees. What are trees? Well, trees are symbolic in the Bible. Everything is symbolic in the world. Everything is. It, philosophy uses things. Even Christ used things like stories about things physical. To represent things not physical. To describe and elaborate on mysteries not physical. Or mysteries made physical. You know what I mean? Through spirit manifested in the physical becomes an enigma to us. Okay? Follow me here. So, trees are symbolic of things in life. In the physical world, when when God speaks of a tree in the Bible, it is a person, a resource, a nation. It is a noun. It's a noun. Like, remember the cedars, you know, how they were cut down, you know, because of their transgressions. How can a tree transgress God's command? They're inanimate objects, but yet they're animate. You know what I mean? They're Trees have a soul just like we do. And think of every mesquite tree as a collective soul of the soul of the mesquite tree. One tree around the whole ecosystem. Think of, you know, pine trees, a forest of pine trees, a forest in the Everglades, a forest in the Amazon. These trees represent um, networks of a collective singular tree. It was the best way that we could illustrate many people's, like, so multiplied that you couldn't fathom it. How could you count every tree in the forest, right? How could you count every sand on the sea? How could you count every star in the sky? Okay, it was just another way to relate. So, we're going to go through a few things about trees and fruits and what the laws are because apparently we don't know them or apparently we just don't care. But, you know what? I found it's better to care. I'm not going to criticize anybody for not caring. It's totally cool. I wish you would, but... Can't force you, right? This is life. So... What we got here... <laughs> shut up. Is a failure to communicate! Oh, man. So, Proverbs 3, nine, Honor the Lord from your wealth. And from the first of all your produce. It's actually a commandment. Uh, after scriptures, after we go through some scriptures, I'll totally bust out what I actually know about trees and fruits and the law. Exodus 34, 26. You shall bring the very first of 
all your first fruits, the very first of the first fruits of your soil, into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil any young goat in its mother's milk. I don't know why they throw that on the end of that, but I haven't... You know what? I heard it said, I've heard it described like what it means to boil a goat in its mother's milk. I cannot remember to save my life right now. Like, Father, if you could totally bring that back up or bring me across something or bring something to me that totally re-illustrates and reiterates exactly what you had to say on that matter. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I'm... It's an idiom, but I can't remember what it's about. It, it's, oh man, it has to do with something else. No, no, it's not just that. There's something else that goes with that. I'm not going to speak on that one yet, just because I'm in conflict with myself about it. But we'll move on to uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 20. Well, here, hold on. Exodus 34, 26, it means that the first fruits of the first fruits are God's. And all the first fruits are already God's. You, it, it belongs to God, okay? But we are productionists, and we tend to get caught up on, well, that tree's got fruit on it. Get that fruit and give it, you know, get it in the crate. Let's go. We got, you know, we got to make money. We got to feed people. No, they, they just got to make money. That's the drive. But normally it started out as something different. Like big corporate conglomerates started out small. You know, as somebody who just wanted to make a difference, who seen a need and wanted to fill it. There had to be love there for the father to even develop that. Or just think of just like, well, you know, I guess some evil men get blessed because, you know, they have the drive, the intent, the that's their contribution to humanity was to you know bring that corporate conglomerate to power and to fruition so that we could all have convenience and food and you know whatever you know what i mean just so that we could have what we need you know in an easier way because it's all about evolution so god sends people to evolve humanity okay now whether they choose to play by the rules or not that you know what rules this is the material world but god gives us some guidelines but he doesn't give us rules again we have free will do, do we not you know what i mean so he gives us guidelines he doesn't give us rules they're you know the commandments are commandments because they are more or less suggestions because you don't have to follow them do you there's people not following them all over the place that you know trust me we don't have to follow them. They're more or less suggestions of if you want a good life, if you want to enjoy your time here, this is a good thing to consider then. You know what I mean? That's what the, it's all it is. 